Nope, we don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. And I am C.L. Whiteside. This is episode 100. If this is your first time joining us today, you have 99 episodes before this that you can check out. But don't stop this episode and go listen to them. Listen to this whole episode and then you can go back and listen to the other 99 episodes. Now, somebody asked me, like, what is the most awesome thing about having your own podcast or, or being able to do this? And the number one thing is just the ability and the opportunity to share God's word with people, to share the good news with people. Like, that's a blessing. And then the second thing I would say is just the consistency to be able to put 100 episodes out. Like, 100 is a lot. That's a nice round number to get to as well. And I feel like none of the episodes have the same first world problem. And if you're like, what is the first world problem? Well, you're going to find out today because we're about to get into our first world problem today. And our first world problem question deals with the fact of uh, college basketball. March Madness is here. Fill out those brackets. Don't suck, though. And and I was thinking about this because it was a college coach and a university who ended up separating and going their separate ways. He got let go, ultimately. And the reason was because... They didn't know if he said something racially insensitive to one of his players. And it went something like this. He said that he was explaining to the player about the different fact that there are roles like there are bosses. There are servants. But some people were like, no, he mentioned bosses. He mentioned servants and he mentioned slaves. And the fact that he did that was racially insensitive. So our first world problem question today is what Bible passage did he use? Because it says that he was quoting the Bible or he was using some passages from the Bible to try to get his point across. And I thought, was it Ephesians 6, verse 5 and 6, which says, Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ? Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. Or did he use the passage of Matthew 20, verse 26 to 28, which says, Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great, among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be your slave just as the son of man did not come to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many and it's like which bible passage did he use and i don't really know so i'm not i'm not gonna jump to too much speculation but i just thought about this as well like was he being racially insensitive or did he really have a point because in one article i read it says that the coach apologized to the team and in that same article, the coach was like, no, I didn't apologize. I stood on what I said. I explained to them what I said and what I meant. And in my mind, I'm like, if he's racially insensitive, he should just apologize. But then at the same time, I'm like, sometimes people are soft and they take your words and they manipulate them and they twist it up. And I'm like, if that's the case, he shouldn't apologize. But you know what? I don't know. So I'm not going to sit up here and act like I do know. But the first world problem question is this. What Bible passage do you think he used? And I guess the second part could be, do you think he should have apologized and was being racially insensitive? Or was this player just being soft in the university? Were they just being soft? Because they parted ways, though. Now, remember, I would love to hear from you on Instagram or Twitter. My handle is championlife23. And oh, yeah, you can leave a comment on YouTube as well. But what do you think? What passage do you think that this coach used? Do you think that this coach is being racially insensitive? Or do you think that this player was just being soft? And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't really know. But I would love to hear from you. And this is our first word problem. It is dinner time. The title of our episode today is This is Annoying. The title is This is Annoying. And what I thought about this episode, I was just thinking about as Christians, there are some things that are absolutely annoying that can get under our skin. Or maybe I should say they just get under my skin. I'm only going to talk about two of those things today. And one of those things is the fact that when you are a Christian, do you ever feel like I just can't have any fun? There are so many rules out there. There are so many people watching me. There are so many people judging me like, I thought you said you were a Christian, but you do this. I thought you were a Christian, but you said that. And that can be super, super annoying. And what I'm talking about with this whole annoying factor is when we look at somebody else, you look at someone else and you know they're not a Christian. And it seems like they're earthly winning, even though that they set, even though they stay sinning. 
they're earthly winning in your eyes. It looks like they're getting blessed and they have so many earthly treasures. And they stay doing grimy and janky stuff. They stay sinning. And this just made me think about this from last week's episode when we talk about life sucking. And it was in Job when I was studying the book of Job. And in Job 21, Job talked about this himself. And I just want to look a little bit at that. And just want to clarify something too. what I said with last episode. I think I mentioned Job and Job and I mentioned Joseph a lot. I want to make it very clear. They definitely sinned. They were not sinless. There's only one man who ever walked the earth and was sinless. And that's Jesus Christ. But what I do want to point out is that as humans, we understand that there are consequences to things that we do. And we all of the time, rank consequences. And this can become super annoying for us too. And what I mean by this is, if I look at a bunch of people and I'm like, dude, I hate them. And then I just don't maybe give them some water and they're thirsty. You'd be like, okay, he just didn't give them some water when they're thirsty. He just don't like these people. But if I was to kill all these people, you would be like, you are out of control just because you don't like them. You would deem the consequence for not giving them some water as maybe a slap on the wrist. But killing them, you like, you probably should die too, or you definitely should be thrown into prison. But they didn't get that type of consequence. And last week when I talked about Job and, and Joseph, that's what I was saying. Their earthly, they had sins. Oh, they definitely had sins. But their earthly consequences didn't seem to fit what they had done. And that's something that we do as people all the time. We're always thinking about this person should get this consequence. And yeah, it, it was bad, but it's not worth this or that. And, and that's what I mean by that. And in Job 21, I'm going to just read a little bit of this to you. This is Job talking. And you got to remember, this is when Job had his friends kind of looking at him like, bruh, you must have did something wrong. You had to do something wrong. Like, why are you getting all of this punishment? Like, what punishment did he get? His family died. He lost everything. Yes, like died. And then all this bad stuff happened to his property. And then all this stuff, bad stuff happened to him and his body. And he goes on to say, and he's making a point to his friends that just because they seem to be earthly winning doesn't mean that they're righteous. They still could be sinning. And that's something that annoys us Christians, or maybe that just annoys me. Job says this. He says, why do the wicked live on growing old and increasing in power? And I think that this was his attempt to say that just because you are wicked and appear to be winning doesn't mean that you were right. Like if, if you can be wicked and winning, then I also could be deemed as righteous or as a good man and seem to be cursed. I think that's what Job is getting at. And it goes on to say they see their children established around them, their offspring before their eyes. They spend their days in prosperity. Then go down to the grave in peace. And yet they say to God, go away. So he was saying these type of people will literally reject God, but it appears that they're getting blessed. And he's, it goes on to say, we want no part of you and your ways. Who is the almighty and why should we obey him? What, God, what good will it do to us to pray? They think their prosperity is their own doing. But I will have nothing to do with that kind of thinking. Yet the light of the wicked never seems to be extinguished. Do they have trouble? Does God distribute sorrows to them in anger? And Job was just pretty much saying like, it's annoying, dude. When you see people that are wicked, you see people that are sinning, but they are earthly winning. And I know that's got to be annoying as a Christian. Or am I the only one that finds that annoying? When you look at somebody else and you're like, man, they look like they have all of the fun in the world. But you know they janky. Or you look at them and you're like, man, they are an evil person. They are stepping on somebody and it looks like they are getting Maybe what you even want, maybe what you even desire, maybe even what you in your mind and most people will say you deserve. And when I look at this, Job knew that the wicked would suffer eventually, but it wasn't the now. And you know how he felt in that moment and that now he felt painful. He felt absolutely painful. And I think another thing to think about when you are a Christian and let's say you're looking for other Christians in your life to help you along your journey. You find someone that you feel like is a Christian, but then you find out what they do behind the scenes. And you like this person, this person is evil, too. But it looks like they are getting blessed. So then you really get confused and you like, man, does this mean that I just have the freedom to sin and do whatever I want and to be low key wicked? Like I'm confused. And that's something that can be super annoying as a Christian. But as we grow in maturity, you realize like that's not the way of God. And no matter what, you will be blessed eventually. It might not be in this world, 
but it would definitely be in the next world. And you don't want to follow the lead of somebody else who appears to be a Christian, but you know very well, like, ooh, that person janky. They're like, oh, they're such a good person. You're like, I'm not hating on them, but I'm just saying, I know what they do on the weekend. I know what they do when nobody's watching. And I don't think I should model that. I don't think I should model that. And on this episode of This Is Annoying, this is something else that I find very annoying. And I know a lot of other Christians and followers of Christ find annoying. And that's the fact that like you get asked certain questions and you can't even answer them. You can't even answer them truthfully. And there are two ways I'm going to go with this. One is when somebody asks you a question like, hey, what do you think about homosexuals having the right to get married? Like, do you feel comfortable answering that and going to the Bible and what the Bible says? Or, hey, I just had somebody um, text me, ask me a question. What do you think about transgenders playing sports? Should they be able to play whatever sport they want to play with whatever gender they want to identify with? And it's like, man, sometimes you don't feel like answering these questions because I don't feel like hearing somebody try to tear me down or or someone try to, to cancel me because that can become super annoying. It's, it's very, very annoying. Or somebody asks you anything from women's rights to uh, abortion to a question about race. You don't want to get canceled. You don't want to say the wrong thing. You want to go to the Bible, but it's like this person, you know, they don't believe the Bible. You know, they don't rock with the Bible. So it's like I could give you the Bible, but I know you're just going to try to rip it apart. But you know what you should do? You should still give them the Bible. You should still give them the truth and you should do it with love. But it, that's annoying. That's annoying because it's like, man, nobody got time for that. Nobody has time to be debating with you, but that's when it comes down to just sharing, sharing the good news with people because you don't want to get canceled. You don't want to get persecuted. And the other way that this can become annoying is when people ask you questions like that are really actually good questions, but they're not doing it from a good place. And they're doing with the intent of trying to make themselves sound smarter or better than God. So if I was God, I would have never created a tree of good and knowledge, good and evil and put it right in there. I would have never gave people the opportunity to sin. I would have never made people sin. And it's like, God did not make us sin. And you obviously don't understand what love is because love is a choice. And that's something that was a way we could explain, uh, explain our love or I should say, show our love to God. But those are questions at times that we don't necessarily have to answer to. Or people ask you other questions about the Bible. Why did God do this? And sometimes you just got to be like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I guess we're going to have to ask him when we get to heaven. And the thing I always try to remind myself or just think about, I heard somebody say before is if I could understand every single thing, if I could understand every single thing that God was doing, that kind of would put me on the same level as God. I know I'm not even close enough to be considered smart as God, but I know a lot of times we do want to seem intelligent. We do want to seem super, super smart. People don't necessarily, they can't explain how a light switch works and electricity comes and the lights are on and you can see lights, you can see my face, but they believe it, you know, they can't really explain it very well, but they can just say, well, what happened? I hit the light switch and lights came on, electricity came, where electricity came from, I don't know. People don't really care. But with the Bible, they seem to do that at times. And it's a few passages that just talks about the understanding of God as something that we're not always going to have. The first one is from John 13, verse seven. It says, Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Now, the funny thing about this passage is this passage comes from when Jesus is actually washing the disciples stanky feet. Yes, you, you heard me correctly. He's washing their feet. I don't know about y'all, but I ain't washing nobody feet. I'm every once in a while I give my wife a foot rub and stuff, but that's because I love her. The rest of y'all, I'm not touching y'all feet like I love you, but I'm not touching your feet, man. And this is just reminding us too. we very rarely question God on what he's doing in our life when we feel like it's blessing us. We never are like, God, why do you keep blessing me? I don't deserve this. Every once in a while we do. But how often do we question God when things aren't necessarily going the way that we want them to go? That's just something for you to think about. Another passage is from Philippians 4 verse 7. And it says, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And that's just reminding us that God's understanding is the most important thing. We don't necessarily have to understand each and everything because we aren't God. We are children of God. We are we are servant, servants of God. But that's what I talk about looking at Jesus's or looking at God's record, looking at his his history. He's a guy who loves us. He's a guy where we don't have to understand everything in order to be blessed, in order for him to have our best interests in mind. We don't. 
Another one comes from Isaiah 40, verse 28. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. Like that's a hard concept to understand too. Like your God never gets tired or weary. And why does he allow this to happen? And why does he do, why does he do this? And it's like, do you not understand? This passage just says, do you not understand? The Lord is everlasting. He's the creator of everything. So he can do what he wants to do. We can't fathom and try to understand him. And that's sometimes when people ask us questions and you know what? We don't have a good answer. And we just got to say, I don't know. But isn't that scary sometimes to say, like, I don't know. I don't have the answer for that. But I will try to look for it. I will try to discover it in the Bible. I will hope that God reveals it to me or more importantly, reveals it to you. But I guess it doesn't matter for those who are trying to ask in a manipulative way or trying to twist or, or take away from, from God's word. And on this episode, of this is annoying. I just have to remind you, and this is more so reminding myself. We have to remember the gospel. We have to remember the good news. We have to remember the grace and the love of God. That is what actually changes people. That's what gets people attention the most, because at the end of the day, we all have this desire to be better, to be better than the next. But. When it comes down to it, we can find comfort in, in Jesus and what he has done for us and who he is to us and how much he loves us. And we don't have to worry about what we haven't done or what we need to do or, or can't do or we think we can do. It's not about that. It's about what Jesus has done. And I know a lot of us, we really don't have a desire to be corrected. And that's what the law does. The law shows us our sins. It shows us that we need a, a savior. But when you think about this, we all have a desire to be noticed. We all have a desire to be seen. We all have a desire to to be fulfilled. We all have a desire to want to know who God is, no matter what. And the devil can sometimes sneak and lie to us and say, you know who God is? You are God. And that's one of the greatest lies. Or you can be equal to God. And that's the farthest thing from the truth. But there are three things that the gospel does for us. And that's why it's so important to hear the good news. It's so important to be reminded of the salvation that we have through Christ Jesus and the faith that he has gifted us with. And the first one is it frees you. It absolutely frees you. The gospel and the grace of God frees you from your past. So despite the things you have or haven't done, you good. You are good because of what Jesus has done. The second thing is it gives you hope for a future. A lot of times we're anxious because we don't know what is going to happen today, what is going to happen tomorrow, what's going to happen in five years. But when you're a child of God and you had that gift of salvation, you have hope for the future. Absolutely. Without a doubt. You got the hope. Believe it. Believe it. And it helps you answer. This is the third thing. Third thing. It helps you answer the most important question. The most important question that all of us struggle with. All of us wonder. All of us desire. And the first part of that question is, who are you? Like, who are you? The gospel reveals who you are. And that's a child of God, someone that Jesus loves so much, so much that someone that God loves so much that he sent his one and only son for you. Like, that's who you are. You are first and foremost a child of God. And the second thing with that is it reveals and tells you who Jesus is. Like, that's the most important thing, knowing who Jesus Christ is. And this passage wraps it up for us from John 1 verse 16. It says out of his fullness, because we all want we have a desire to be fulfilled, to be full. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So you got to think about it. We don't want to be like the Pharisees and, and using the law to make us or think that we're better than any and every person. We want to use the gospel. We want to use the gospel to show us who we are and more importantly, who Jesus Christ is to us. And this is the non-microwave truth. Thanks for joining me on this episode of This is Annoying. Now, with episode 100, I got to give some thank yous. And I had to write this down because I don't want to miss anybody. I, I'm, I know I'm going to miss some people, though, but that's that's just kind of how that is. So my bad. I want to give a special thank you to my guy, Kenneth, he came up with the beats or the music that you hear on the podcast. Appreciate your brother. Love you. Thank you to Nia. Great ideas. Good conversation. 
She makes the podcast, does a lot of behind the scenes stuff, making sure that the podcast get put on different platforms and everything. Pastor Shoopy and Mandy for editing it, making sure I don't say anything crazy, making sure that I'm saying biblically sound and just not sounding like a fool. Appreciate you. And then thank you to Bethany and Jordan. They just came out with the podcast art. I don't even know if Jordan did, but Jordan was on the email. So Jordan, I don't know who you are, but I will probably... Yeah, well, okay, well, yeah, but Bethany, thank you for the podcast art. Right, Jordan, thank you as well. And if you haven't checked out the podcast art, right, it's new for episode 100. We got some big things coming. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who tunes in and listens, especially to those who have listened more than once, more than twice, and, and our faithful listeners. I appreciate you a lot, and I appreciate the people who give me feedback on Instagram or Twitter. Candy, you the man. Um, yeah, I'm missing some people. Josh, yeah, love y'all all. Peace punch, Captain Crunch. Say no to drugs and yes to Jesus. I am out.